What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you're new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now, if I look the same, it's probably because I am the same person. This is the exact same day as our previous video. And ironically, on my way back to the shop from my recent search and recovery of the young lady's cell phone, I received another call for a lost wallet and another lost cell phone. And so I'm actually headed out to go look for it right now. And kind of the same scenario, I don't have the equipment, I don't have the lines and the reels that I need with me. All I've got is a basic BCD reg tank and weights. I've got my mask, my fins, my suit, and I've got a flashlight. And I'm gonna head out and see if I can find this gentleman's cell phone and his wallet without any lines or anything like that. So let's go jump in the lake one more time for another search and recovery and see if we can be successful just based off our general knowledge of, of scuba and our general knowledge of search and recovery as well. All right guys, let's see if we can do this again. Uh, just like in the last video, I'm headed out to do a search and recovery for a lost cell phone and a wallet by uh, the gentleman there on the docking sea. And he's actually giving me directions. He's saying, okay, here's where I poured my cooler out. And of course my wallet and cell phone was on top of the cooler when I poured and down in the water it went. And once again, I don't have the equipment that I normally would. I, I don't have an SMB with me. I don't have a reel system with me. I don't have anything to mark the location. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is just kind of swim out to the area. He's gonna tell me when to stop where he thinks he had uh, lost his items. And then of course, I'm gonna go down and I'm just gonna get a general idea of what's on the bottom. And as you can see, I got beautiful conditions here I probably have about half an inch visibility and that's the reality of our lake sometimes we are searching in a, in a totally blacked out situation now I will state this one of the reasons it's blacked out here is this gentleman was like most they're raking around using magnets using whatever they can to try to find their lost items and it stirs up the bottom for me so I've got a, several things against me on this dive one I don't have my normal searching tools and number two I don't have the visibility that I need to um, be able to do a successful search or you know have a, a a good easy search to find what I'm looking for but nevertheless I am still going to get a, a general idea of what's in the area is there any debris is there any limbs is there leaves is it silt is it rock is it mud is it sand I'm just going to get a general idea of the bottom composition how it's laid out as well the contour of the bottom and then of course I will make a decision on how I want to search now typically if I don't have the tools of the trade with me and I want to be able to search an area very methodically especially in an area like this where it's just blacked out um, and I can't really judge distance to do say a navigational search or an expanding square or something like that I'm still gonna do a circle search and I can do a circle search without a line I'm gonna basically take a finger I'm gonna stick it down in the silt and I'm gonna lock it in and just imagine if you will kind of uh, spinning around in a circle with your your finger in the mud and I'm just sweeping my other arm back and forth so as I'm going around the circle I'm just sweeping in my arm back and forth and I don't have any gloves on right now so I've got great dexterity and I'm just very slowly sweeping to see if I can locate this phone by feel or the wallet by feel either one and I'm just moving back and forth back and forth now once I've searched an area or searched a certain radius then of course I can move over a foot or two and continue to do this. Now I'm still going to be able to use a compass to navigate here and kind of determine where I'm at but it's not a large area that I'm searching, so that that type of search is not really gonna be uh, perfect for this situation. What I've decided to do here is I've had the gentleman to see what tools he's got on the dock, and of course he's got a fishing rod. So what I'm gonna have him do is I'm gonna have him take his fishing rod and drop the line exactly where he thinks uh, he lost the item. Just like I did in the previous video where the gentleman had um, the boat pole and he stuck it down in the water to create a reference point, I'm gonna have this gentleman do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna have him do it with a fishing rod. And what that's gonna allow me to do is have a good reference point to go down on and hopefully be able to locate the item. Now I'm not dealing with very deep water, it's about eight or possibly nine feet here, so you can see I don't have to do much of a search once I'm down there because my search radius is not gonna be that big. But I'm gonna have him drop the line down here and that's gonna be my reference point to start with. 
and we're going to see if we can locate both his phone and his wallet. Now you also notice it is a little bit clear because I've gave the, the uh, area a little bit of time to uh, clear up. But as you can see, as soon as I went down, boom, found his phone that quickly. He was able to drop that line almost exactly where he dropped the phone at. And I was able to find it very quickly. Now I need to find his wallet as well. And I do want to make you guys a video in the future. A couple of you guys have asked in previous videos, explain drop rate. Can you show us scientifically how drop radius works? And I'll be happy to do that. Um, I need to go over to the pool where we got good clear water and I need to take several different objects with me just to show you how they do sink and how drop radius is factored into a search. Um, but as you can clearly see here, in about eight, nine, ten foot of water, he was able to drop the line directly on his phone. But I am having to continue to search for his wallet. And I think the wallet in this particular search was about six feet away. So it's well within the radius of what uh, the search area was but I'm just kind of circling around doing the exact same method I did previous or prior to having the line drop I'm just kind of sticking my hand down in the mud there and using it as a pivot point to kind of circle around once I've done it at least an arm length sweep all the way around then of course I'm going to move over an additional arms lit uh, length and kind of repeat that search pattern as well but um but yeah, I believe I found his wallet. It was about six foot away from where that line was. And I should be coming up on it here any minute now. Um, but you'll see it was kind of buried too. Once again, they were using rakes. They were using magnets to kind of uh, clip onto the, the money clip of the wallet area, hoping to find it. Uh, and it started up and it actually buried the, the wallet or his money clip as well. So it did take a little bit to, to search here. Once again, not having the proper tools on hand just because I just didn't have them that day. I'm still able to successfully complete a search based off my training and my knowledge and my abilities and my skill sets. Uh, even if I didn't have the proper equipment, I was able to still set up with whatever equipment was available there on site and be successful. So like I said, I should be coming up on his wallet here any second now and you'll see just how buried it was um, and that was just from them um, covering it up by raking. But there it is. I'm going to go ahead and come up and hand it off to the owner, get paid for this job and then uh, hopefully be able to have more successful searches in the future as well. So there you go guys, success number two. You saw the last video and of course this video, I was able to do two successful search and recovery dives without the tools of the trade, if you will, without lines, without reels, to actually go out there and do a very methodical search. Um, but kind of the same scenario here. We talked about drop radius. We talked about being organized underwater. And we talk about having that last point seen or that reference point. I was able to have the owner drop a fishing line straight down where he said he lost it. I was able to go straight down that line. And of course, I found his cell phone. Um, the second part of that search, of course, was looking for his wallet. And I actually had to dig for it uh, because he had been digging around and dropping a magnet and everything else for it. So I was able to find it even though it was cleaned up. But being able to have that drop line or that reference line straight going straight down where he said he had lost it I was able to have a more successful search after the fact but guys I really hope you enjoyed this video as well if you did big thumbs up definitely share it as well if you got any questions on search and recovery dives or diving put it down in the comment section below guys we do this for a living we go out we find objects we do minor search and recovery we do heavy salvage work as well so let me know down in the comment section if you got any questions and i'll try to help you out the best i can if you are wanting to get into search and recovery work go by your local ssi training center and see what search and recovery courses they offer if they don't give us a call we actually teach this class as well but guys as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like us on facebook pin us on pinterest subscribe to us here on youtube and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.